It was supposed to be just another speck in the sky. A faint traveller wandering through the vast emptiness between stars, catalogued as it pierced the boundaries of our solar system. Three Iatlas, named by the same system that had identified countless objects before it, didn't initially raise any alarms, but the more we looked, the less it made sense. It moved too fast. It glowed too brightly. And worst of all, it refused to behave like anything we've seen before. Then came the moment everything changed. The James Webb Space Telescope locked its instruments onto the object. And what it revealed wasn't just unsettling. It was impossible. The data suggested that 3i Atlas isn't a comet, not in composition, not in structure, and certainly not in intent, because what it's doing now shouldn't be happening. And what it's headed towards may not be random. It may be us. When 3i Atlas was first observed in early July, astronomers noticed it had a hyperbolic orbit, a classic sign that it wasn't native to our solar system. That alone was exciting. Objects like Umamua and Borisov had captured the world's imagination in the past, entering and exiting our solar system with barely any time to study them. But 3i Atlas was different. It wasn't merely cutting across space. It was descending into our system, and its path was shockingly aligned with the ecliptic plane, the very flat disk where the planets orbit the sun. That detail triggered immediate suspicion among scientists. Interstellar objects shouldn't follow such an orderly route. They're supposed to arrive at wild, arbitrary angles, not glide effortlessly through the very zone where life on Earth was born. The probability of such an alignment by chance is vanishingly small. It's like throwing a dart across the galaxy and hitting the bullseye on a moving target. Was this object just lucky or was it aiming? But that wasn't the only anomaly. As 3i Atlas approached, it began to exhibit course corrections, tiny shifts in trajectory that defied expectations for an inert natural object. It would slow then speed up. Its orientation subtly changed as if it were adjusting, as if it were scanning. The scientific community braced for impact. Metaphorically speaking, no one was ready to declare it artificial. Not yet, but the data whispered something uncomfortable. This object wasn't drifting blindly. It was arriving with purpose. When Webb locked onto 3i Atlas, expectations were clear. It would behave like a comet, emit water vapor as it warmed, shed dust as it approached the sun. Instead, it did something else entirely. Webb's infrared instruments peeled back the haze of particles surrounding the object and found nothing familiar. The coma, that glowing tail typically made of sublimated ice and dust, was composed of highly reflective metallic fragments, possibly alloys. Some readings even suggested compounds that shouldn't exist outside of controlled laboratory environments, materials forged not by nature, but by engineering. More alarming still, the heat signature of 3i Atlas was uniform. It wasn't radiating in the erratic, uneven way natural bodies do. Instead, it emitted thermal readings consistent with active thermal regulation. It's as if the object was cooling itself. And when Webb scanned its surface under the near-infrared range, it didn't find a pockmarked irregular rock. It found geometry, smooth planes, right angles, a repeating pattern that looked, for lack of a better term, designed. Scientists scrambled to explain the data. Could it be a shattered fragment of a Dyson-like structure? A derelict probe from an extinct civilization? Or was it something new? A type of object we've never imagined operating under physics we've yet to understand? Whatever it was, the label comet could no longer hold. This was no frozen ball of dust. This was something else entirely. Something far beyond our current definitions of celestial objects. Then came the signal. At first it was dismissed as background noise, an anomaly in the data. But as more observatories pointed their radio telescopes toward 3i Atlas, the same pattern began to emerge. A low-frequency pulse repeating at irregular intervals. It didn't match any known cosmic sources. Not pulsars, not quasars, not magnetars. Instead, it seemed localized, tied to the object itself. And then something stranger happened. The pulse began to change depending on who was listening. Ground stations in South America, Europe and Asia all reported slightly different sequences, as if the object was not just emitting a signal, but responding. One set of readings even matched frequencies used in deep space telemetry, the kind we use to communicate with our own probes. Analysts fed the data into AI interpretation models, and what came back was cryptic bursts of structured logic 
that hinted at syntax, structure, intent. It was as if the object wasn't just speaking, but adapting its language, probing our machines, learning our patterns, modifying itself in real time. The web team then made the decision to halt public updates, triggering a wave of speculation that hasn't stopped since. Because if the object is emitting a signal, and that signal is targeted, who is it targeting? As the scientific world struggled to keep pace with the revelations, the institutions responsible for safeguarding public information went dark. NASA scrubbed several public entries from its small body database, including earlier orbital simulations. ESA issued a cryptic statement suggesting 3i Atlas posed no immediate threat, but avoided any mention of the web findings. FOIA requests filed by journalists were met with silence or heavily redacted responses. And then came the leaks. An internal NASA memo hinted that the object had been tracked longer than previously disclosed, perhaps even before its official discovery. Webb may not have been the first to observe it, just the first to reveal the truth. Insiders claimed that US Space Command had classified parts of the data, citing national security interest. But what could possibly make a comet a matter of security? Unless it wasn't a comet. Unless what they found was so far outside our current understanding that releasing the truth would collapse the public's sense of stability. If 3i Atlas is artificial, then someone or something made it. And if it's here now, the question is no longer what is it, it's why now. As more data from 3i Atlas was quietly disseminated among a handful of academic institutions, one particular research group began to analyze the frequency modulation patterns in the signal, not from an astronomical standpoint, but a neurological one. Their findings were nothing short of disturbing. According to their internal report, portions of the signal resonate within the human alpha and theta brainwave ranges, frequencies associated with cognitive relaxation, intuition, and even dream states. It appeared inexplicably that the signal was not just broadcasting in the electromagnetic spectrum, but tuned to interact with the very biology of human thought. Some researchers began to speculate that the object may be deploying what they called a psychological imprint, not to communicate in the traditional sense, but to plant patterns of thought, seeds of concepts, abstract impressions, a kind of remote suggestion mechanism operating on a planetary scale. This could explain the reported surge of shared dreams among those working directly with the data, some of whom described vivid visions of impossible structures and landscapes made of light. Were these coincidences or a response? Was the signal just meant to inform or transform? Meanwhile, a small team of engineers and data scientists at a private observatory in New Zealand made the decision to do something no government agency dared attempt. They responded using a focused array of high-gain antennas. They beamed back a simple binary sequence, prime numbers followed by a Fibonacci chain, the most basic attempt at interstellar contact. What happened next was never officially confirmed, but satellite logs from nearby facilities showed that minutes after the transmission, the signal from 3i Atlas inverted its modulation. It didn't repeat its prior sequence. It changed. Some described it as a handshake, others as a warning, but most agree the object registered our reply. Whether that reply was welcomed remains unclear. The team went silent shortly afterward. Their servers were seized under emergency telecommunications orders. Their lead engineer posted a single cryptic message before deleting all their accounts. We weren't supposed to answer. As the mystery deepened, a surprising source emerged. Ancient texts, not pseudoscientific ramblings or fringe theorists, but credible peer-reviewed scholars who began to notice eerie similarities between the Three-Eye Atlas event and mythological accounts across multiple ancient cultures. From the celestial visitors in Sumerian cuneiform tablets to the burning chariots of Vedic scripture and even the sky serpents of the Nazca, there were recurring themes of objects from the stars that descend in silence, bearing unknown knowledge, shifting thought and belief wherever they pass. One comparative linguist noted that the number three encoded in the designation 3i features prominently in numerous sky god mythologies often associated with judgment, change, or destruction. Coincidence? Or had we encountered this before and simply forgotten? Could 3i Atlas be a returning cycle, something humanity has faced and forgotten over and over again? And what if 3i Atlas is not a message, not a visitor, but a trigger? 